Behold, the Atlas. Growing bigger every day. Ah, they made it smaller. It's smaller now. That's definitely smaller. All right, that's strange. We can do that. Hi, Sisrin here with another video for the upcoming 3.16 Scourge League. And uh, this is going to be talking about the new Atlas passives. Not necessarily about how to get them, just about where to allocate them. If you're, I think I have some old videos telling you how, but it's basically Maven stuff. Anyway, I'm going to tell you what points to put where. Let's start with Haywork Hamlet. And honestly, I want to preface this by there's a lot of really, really hard choices. Obviously, I'm more uh, SSF hardcore oriented, but I'll talk a little bit about all the points. So Haywork Hamlet, the two essence nodes is definitely what I'm going to be doing first. Amplified is insanely strong, especially now with essences on the map itself. Just incredibly good because you're getting up shrieking. Uh, just like that you're naturally fighting and that means when you're remnanting something you can actually get deafening essences So it really really adds up and it's really really nice that you are getting such an insane amount of essences Because harvest obviously has to swap essences around things and you just end up doing so much. It's so great um, And then next up I would be going for the groves call you could leave it there and then take something else But uh, I will most likely take the groves call and bumper crop not a big fan of Heart of the Grove, unless they rebalance how much they, um, of the bosses you're finding, like the tier 4 beast. I think I found one all of last thing, so it's it's a non-important thing for me. And the um, harvest areas have a 10% chance to wilt. I think somebody said that's a 2 or 3% buff. 3% more harvests? So, I don't know. It's, it's pretty whatever. Definitely don't care about that one. Then for me, my last point would be going into Test of Loyalty. Or just additional early um, betrayal but you could also do the ritual altars quite a lot of people like those they definitely drop a lot of currency and a lot of really good items so it, it's sort of just preference right now ritual is something you'd be more looking into like rolling into later the ritual stuff is incredibly good especially in trading for buying splinters but for SSF you're not gonna get that many splinter things so just having the 10% chance is pretty okay and uh, you can you can think about rolling into all of it later too, but much harder for SSF. Next up, we have Valdo's Rest, which has uh, Epidemiology. You need to take Spores of the Wind first, but uh, I really want to go hard on Blight. I really want to try to do a lot of the Uber Blight content as well. So definitely want that. Now, if you want in Valdo's Rest, you can take a point in Persecutory Dilution and get more of like unique uh, Cluster Jewels, more Splinters, more bosses, etc. But uh, I will most likely also be going for at least two points into the Delve stuff. I think Delve is going to be pretty juicy this league as well. And uh, uh, an important thing to note, things don't exist in multiple regions anymore. Like there, this is the only region with Delve stuff, for example. So I will definitely be taking Guarded Hordes and Sulfide Infusion. Is kind of tempted to take the Harbinger stuff still just to... I do want Ancient Orbs, right? And Horizons and stuff and Harbinger Orbs. They are nice. It'll just be a hard choice if I'm taking more Delve points uh, or if I actually get to take Diplomatic Escort. And also, like, a lot of people love doing Delirium and, and upgrading that. The um, Greater Forces in Singular Eternity is definitely not bad. Um, I feel like Singular Eternity is kind of pointless for me because I usually clear fast enough. And Greater Forces means they're getting more rewards the, the further away from the distance of the mirror you are. Glenac Cairns, I am 100% going to be uh, opening up with resource allocation and contest the development. This is the incursion nodes. Basically, it just means that very often it's going to either guarantee an upgrade to plus two or uh, a 50 50 chance to plus two, depending if you're changing the room out or upgrading the one you're in. So, really, really nice. You get a large amount of corruption temples, something I like doing quite a lot. So, that is an easy two first points for me. Honestly, there's also going to be more respecking. Then I'll be doing my Legion stuff here with high value targets and face to face. They're really, really good points, especially face to face. Make sure that there's a general every time you have a Legion. So you'll get a uh, quite a lot more splinters from that. Sadly, emblematic has been removed, so we can't get that outside of watchstone things. But yeah, another thing that I might take, especially early before finishing this up, is I might do um, uh, Underground Kingdom and Lightless Legion before doing all my Legion farming. So I'll keep farming like Scarabs and stuff like that, but I'll do the Lightless Legion first just to get item level 86 status Scarabs and stuff like that. It depends how easy it'll be to get it from Expedition. And then I could respec into uh, the last Legion point later. However, 
in the end game, if I, especially if I get a headhunter and if I'm like really, really juicing, trying to get for level 100, I will take all the three beyond points. Beyond is really, really good this league because we have it on the map device. Headhunter makes it insane. Uh, and it, it's not too bad to farm one uh, for like no lifers. Very, very good for juicing in general. And then you can get rid of the incursion for that. They are Arthane, super easy to first points, and that is uh, Trespassers and Exotic Goods, Invasion Bosses, and the, the fact that they drop an additional valuable item. And it's it's insane. It makes just regular mapping, just blasting maps, super enjoyable, especially if you like can't afford juicing your map. The Exotic Goods now, what it does is the Invasion Bosses in the area drop one additional valuable item, and that can be like six things, stacks of currency, like five to 10 C, etc. Uh, sextants, scarabs, just really, really good stuff. A bunch of silver coins, and it really adds up. And I think it was in three or four days of farming, I got 16 six links. So obviously not all of those are armors. Some will be weapons and staves and stuff, but um, and bows. Still really, really good. So I want to be focusing quite a lot on breach this thing. So I'll quite likely be doing all three of the breach nodes. Flash breach is really, really nice. Makes them like feel very good. Don't waste as much of your time. And obviously they've changed how drops uh, are like they're dropping at the end of the breach now even in these i think i know at least in the domains the loot drip drops at the end but i think even in the map ones the expedition stuff however really really good as well i don't really like buried knowledge but the ancient writing is really good so um, taking that could be great but then you can't have flash breach and I'd probably be more likely to drop exotic goods later when I've just had too many six things because you do, you know, there's only so many like random six things you'll need. It might change a little bit this thing with the scourge mechanic, right? There might be some really, really powerful things you want to crangle onto a chest. So there's also insane bestiary nodes here. I will definitely be respecking into those and do similar to how I do elder days where I do like loads of elders for watcher size with the uh, increased chance of watcher size. I will do bestiary days where I'll save up like 80 to 100 bestiary missions, do all of them in a few hours, and then respect out of the bestiary points. But they're they're really good. Now, Uncharted Realms, and I feel like they've really done a good job of making the respect currency more like you, you want it now. You do want to respect quite regularly, even pretty happy with that. So close allies. Honestly, this is like my favorite thing. Uh, I initially didn't like this when it first came out, but it's it's just huge. The amount of missions you end up getting. So really, really good. I usually take that as my first thing. Remnants of the past, really, really good to just passively have there. You get a bunch of Shaper and Elder maps. So that's probably my second favorite. Now, if you have a really powerful build on Hardcore, you can do Guardian's Aid and on Softcore. Definitely really, really enjoy that. Gaze into the Abyss is something I will only take. I would do an Elder Day. I'll farm up like 20, 30, 40 sets of the Elder. And, uh, and kill them all and get slightly more watcher side. Doesn't always feel like I get more, but you do. The Master of the Atlas and Paths Not Taken is really, really good for hunting things like Cortex, etc. And uh, you'll get a lot more like of the special rare maps. So I really do like having that as well. Like a, a favorite for me would be having the Close Allies, the Remnant of the Past, and then uh, Paths Not Taken and maybe a uh, neural pathways just so you can get a bunch of synthesis maps now sometimes and i love doing this on soul cell fun is i will save up 20 to 30 synthesis maps and then spec into the other nodes run them all and then spec out of them again once i've finished it the cyrus ones can be really really good especially if you really want awakened gems then specking into those and like focusing it down really good so you could have close allies pass not taken adept tracker and the terminal Thaumaturgical Awakening. And you could also drop Remnants of the Past and take the Atlas Awaken as well. Plus one Awakening level will help with dropping Awaken Orbs and also Gems. So really, really good. Uh, and obviously you can tell that we're choosing between different OPs, which is a really good feeling to have as a player. You want... Uh, I, I always feel like what I enjoy the most in games is like, fuck, I really want those nodes. But I, then I don't get these nodes and they're really nice too. That's like, for me, the best feeling ever. So I think they've really done a good job with that. I've always really hated it when it's like, well, you're stupid if you don't take these. And that's the only choice, right? That's always bad in my opinion. So hopefully these uh, will help you. That gives you a rough idea of what I'm going to be taking. Honestly, I don't even know how different I would take them on Trade League. Very, very few. It's mostly the ritual nodes that are, they really shine on Trade. Either way, hope you guys are enjoying all the videos coming up for the uh, Scourge League. And we'll have loads of build guides coming up as well. 
thank you guys so much for watching. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.